What's up everyone, Steven here from techmaker.tv. In this episode, we're gonna keep going with our impressionist implementation where we are tracking page views for our blog internally. This is actually part 10 in this building a blog series where we build this thing up from scratch. So if you wanna follow along from the beginning, feel free to go over to techmaker.tv and you can do that there. Um, with that said though, in this episode, what we're gonna do is essentially build up some queries so that we can start looking at charting and analytics in next episode. In order to get going, we're going to have to basically continue with what we started on in the last episode. So if we look back really quick at the code, we set up essentially this uh, type here. And um, I'm going to add a couple of new scopes on this page view. So if you're curious about what the page view is and why, are we, why we're inheriting from impression, you'll have to go back to the last episode, which would have been part two for this impressionist gym. Um, but in any case, in this episode, I'm gonna work out these first two queries. I'm gonna go ahead and get that going so that we can start working on the front end a little bit. And then once we get that looking like something um, tangible, we'll come back and add these other two queries after and then revamp our page a little bit. So that said, let's go back to the terminal for a second. And I'm going to uh, go through a couple more demos in the console here. So in the last episode, we were looking at how to, to um, essentially pull back our page views and look at what all's in here and so on. But we need to be able to do a little bit more. And so I'm going to introduce a couple of new ideas. And I'm not going to go super in-depth. I'll leave that up to you. But I want to kind of just gloss over it a little bit. Um, so if I look at, um, let's say that I want to see counts for how many page views there were on particular days. Well, we can use this cool thing called group, um, which is an active record uh, method that we have on the class. But before I use it on dates, I want to look at a more simple example. So if I set up page view group, and then I just pass in, um, I think I can do it like this, impressionable type and then I do dot count you'll see here that it's telling me I have posts and I have 11 uh, views in the database so we can do that we can also do um, let's see what would be a little bit more interesting maybe impressionable ID so this is actually looking at uh, the different posts here so we can see that the post with the ID 2 had three views and the post with the ID 3 had eight views and in fact this is sort of I just did this accidentally but this is sort of our uh, most popular uh, post query right there almost it's not quite right so we'll put a pin in that um, so I want to essentially look at how do we do this on a day-by-day -day basis and in order to do that, we want to use uh, a timestamp so we can use our created at, but we have to actually convert it into a date, I think. So let's just try it without it. Let's just assume that I'm wrong for a second. Let's try created at here. And so what happens is you see each one of these timestamps is, is unique, obviously, because it's down to the second. Um, so what we need to do is if we want to actually see the accounts by day, we need to convert this to a date. So what we can do is instead of passing that in as just the symbol, we can say we can wrap it with parentheses, use a string, and say date. And now we're going to get actual date strings with the view counts. So that's actually our first query. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this, and um, we'll paste that over in our uh, file over here. So we'll say scope, and let's just say. Um, views well it's we're in a page view class let's just call it by date and let's let's call it count by date maybe something like that and we'll paste that in here and like that so what we want to do actually though is accept a start date and an end date and what I have up here is the last seven days or custom range so let's take a look at that so I'm just going to create a new scope, actually, and we may modify. I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to implement the seven-day thing yet, the default. Um, we could do that here. Um, for now, though, I don't think I'm going to worry about that. We'll see once we actually start building it how we want to do that. Um, but what I'm going to do is say uh, for dates 
date range. And then we're going to take in a start date, an end date. And then what we're going to do is just say where, and then I think we can do this. I think we can say created at, and then we're going to have start date, uh, end date. And we can actually do this too. We can say like um, beginning of day. I'm spelling beginning right. I don't think I am. And then end date, end of day. Let's go try that in the console over here. Let me reload. And then we'll say uh, page view for, what do we call that? For date range. And then we'll say uh, seven days ago. And then uh, date dot today. And then undefined method beginning of day. Okay, I did misspell it finally. It is two ends. Um, so we'll reload again and then try that. Undefined method beginning of day, beginning of date. I'm doing all kinds of misspellings here. One more time and we'll see what else I did wrong. Okay, cool. So that is what we want. And now we have our date range. So what we can do now is we can say, we can actually run this last query and we can say, um, what is our, sorry, I keep forgetting what things are called. And then count by date. And you can see here that we have our two dates with page views and numbers. Let's do a quick sanity check here and change this to be one day ago. And so now we just see the stuff from the 19th. And let's do this again and make this seven. And then let's make this um, up to one day ago. And then we have the 17th. So our filter for dates is working how we expect. So this is cool. This is um, the first part of this is actually kind of done, right? So we can get back the total views on a day by day basis. But what about the unique views? And that's actually quite a bit more complicated as far as queries go. And I'm not going to explain this in its entirely, mostly because I haven't got an easy way to do it. Um, but I'm going to walk through it and uh, we'll see where we can get to. So um, what we need to do is essentially something like this. So we can, I'm going to step by this piece by piece so that uh, we can kind of think through it. So we'll do page view select. And then I want to look at the IP address. And so what's happening here is it's pulling back just the IP address um, for each page view record. So you can see here that even the ID is nil and the only attribute is the IP address. And it's this colon colon one because I'm running on localhost. If I did page view dot all, um, you can see I get back an array with all the various attributes. If I do um, select some other thing, action name, you can see here that I get that back. So select basically just lets you pull back individual attributes. So what I want to do is say select IP address distinct. So that's basically saying uh, get the ones where the IP address is unique. Now from here what I want to do is actually count uh, so right now I've filtered down to the IP address and I've got the distinct IP addresses and now I want to group by date again and count them. So if I start here and I do dot group and we'll say date created at dot count. Now we can see that I've only got one real unique visitor on each day. So I'm going to have to test this in a scenario where I have more than actually one person just to make sure that I'm thinking this right. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and just grab this query and assume that this is right. Um, to the best of my knowledge, this is going to work. Um, if it doesn't, which uh, wouldn't be the first time this happened in my life, we will adjust when we see it. Um, so what I'm going to do is create a new method, unique count by date. And we'll just paste that in there like that. 
So now we should be able to reload over here and do page view unique count by date. And there we go. And um, so these scopes are normally chainable. Um, and maybe I shouldn't actually make this a scope because it's actually not chainable. Um, and that's probably what I should do, actually. Um, I'm not going to worry about it right now. But in any case, these I don't believe we can chain anything on the back end of this because it's returning a hash. And so you won't be able to add any more active record stuff to it. But this for date range we can put in the front. So what we're going to do in our controller when we start putting some stuff out for analytics is we're going to have something that's like a stat equals something for date range and we'll pass in a start date and an end date and then we'll call count by date on whatever that is. Cool, so basically we've got these two taken care of and now I've got two more to-do items up here which I'm going to renumber um, and we'll do those again after we start by setting up um, the analytics in the next episode. So I kind of want to get to the front end because for a lot of people that's kind of the cool part. For a lot of other people, the back end is the cool part. So I like to mix it up. I don't want to spend too many back-to-back -back episodes just kind of looking at console output and whatever. So anyway, that's pretty much it for this episode. If you've got any questions or feedback or comments, throw them down in the comments below on YouTube if you're watching this over on TechMaker. Uh, we'll have a comment section over there pretty soon, and uh, we can chat there, or you can email me at steven at techmaker.tv. All of the above should work. Um, anyway, that's pretty much it for this episode. I will talk to you in the next one. Thank you for watching.